Hi friends, welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia and I'm one of the second grade teachers at the Soulard School. Here for Teaching in Room 9, I focus all my lessons on math for second graders, but everyone is always encouraged to join. Welcome back friends, I'm so glad that you are able to be here with me today and I can't wait to get started learning more and practicing with our patterns. I hope that you're having a really good week and I hope that if you have gone back to school or going back to school this week that it's a smooth transition for you and you're enjoying getting to spend time with your teachers and your classmates whether it is virtual or in person. All right, so I like to start our lessons with our mindful minute exercises. This gives us some tools to help us to refocus and center our bodies when sometimes those feelings start to get really big and overwhelming. So I thought that we could take some deep breaths here together today. And I also kind of wanted to show you um, some of the things that I have in my calm down kit at school and talk to you about maybe setting up a safe space for you in your home, especially while we're doing so much of uh, this distance learning. All right, so we're gonna do our first three breaths together. We're gonna loosen our muscles, so shake out your shoulders, try to loosen any tension you might be feeling in your forehead and your neck. We're gonna breathe in through our nose, on the count of three, and out through our mouth, on the count of three. Ready? Take a deep breath in through your nose. One, two, three, and out through your mouth. in through your nose and out through your mouth and breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth All right, friends, keep focusing on taking those deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth while I talk to you a little bit about my calm down safe place at school. So I always set up a safe place in my classroom. This is a place where you can go, feel nice, comfortable, cozy. You can get a little bit of extra space when you start to have those really big or strong feelings. I always make sure I have lots of cozy pillows and a cozy rug for my friends to lie on. And this is kind of where we like to call um, our space to do an engine check. That's where you just want to check in with your own body. How am I feeling right now? What are some of the thoughts that I might be having? Am I feeling a little more blue, which means lower energy, maybe feeling sad or down? maybe kind of sleepy, or am I feeling green, ready to go and learn for the day? Am I starting to feel yellow? And is my energy starting to rise? Am I starting to feel a little bit maybe too excited or anxious? Uh, maybe I'm starting to, to feel angry. Maybe I'm having um, an argument with a peer and I'm starting to feel my body react in that way where I'm starting to feel a little bit more yellow. Or am I feeling red? Am I feeling way out of control, uncomfortable? I don't know how to recenter my body where I'm feeling really angry or really high energy. And I wanna refocus my engine back to a green and focused um, place so that I know I'm ready to learn. And then I always have, in addition to some of these engine check colors and feelings in my cozy safe place uh, in my classroom, I always have my calm down kit. So in my calm down kit, I have all sorts of awesome things. Um, I have these uh, strategies here that they um, you can flip through and they give you so many countless ideas of uh, something that you might be able to do in that moment when you are feeling really overwhelmed. And they just say, I can calm down. So we'll start to go through some of these as well. 
I always make sure I have a few sensory bottles in my calm down kit. Maybe you have a sensory bottle at home too, or you've seen them in your classroom before. And that way you can kind of shake them up. And I've got nice glitter in here. I've also got um, a little dragon in here so you can focus your breathing as you try to find the dragon in the bottle. All right, and then lastly, um, another thing, I always usually have paper, crayons for you to write or draw maybe how you are feeling. I have some, pardon me, some social stories in there, and um, I find this one here pretty helpful as well. So maybe when you're starting to feel yellow or red, you can feel your body tightening and maybe your energy level or your anger starting to rise. You can take these deep breaths, and as you breathe in, and out, just like we were doing together. You take one off as you do each breath, in through your nose and out through your mouth. And it kind of um, gives you that visual reminder and then also my friends kind of like that noise um, as you rip off each uh, breath there, reminding you to take those long, deep, focused breaths so that you can recenter your body and feel ready to go. All right, friends, you guys did such a nice job. I hope that you are feeling centered, ready to learn, excited to begin your school year, your school days. And um, if you are at home, I definitely encourage my friends at home to maybe create a small, a small safe place in their room or somewhere in your home where you can go when you start to feel overwhelmed by those big feelings. All right, friends, um, I also like to start our lessons with our learning goals or objectives. Um, and as you guys know, uh, we have been focusing on our learning goal of I can look for and make patterns. All our lessons this week have been focused on geometric patterns or different patterns with shapes. We've talked a lot about the different vocabulary along with patterns, growing and repeating patterns, and all these different ways that we can practice making patterns together. So that is what we have been focusing on. Um, I also made a um, smaller chart uh, before we jump into some of the other activities they have for us today. Um, just sort of another reminder again for my friends that are at home saying, why do I need to go over patterns again? I've learned them, practiced them, built them so many times for so many years. It seems silly. Why should I have to continue practicing patterns? And uh, we've talked about these a uh, couple of times so far this week. Um, it says, why build patterns? And I have in the center that patterns are the heart of math. They really are one of those building blocks or those foundation steps that you start building off of to really kind of put yourself in that math brain and also to help build strong mathematicians. And some of the reasons we've been focusing on working with our um, geometric or shape patterns this week is they help us to make predictions when we are able to see those relationships in our patterns. They help us to identify or find similarities and form general rules and concepts so that we are able to figure out what our pattern rule is and then we can extend the pattern, which is what we'll be practicing here today. Um, they help us make a sense of order, right? Because math sometimes can feel overwhelming with all the different things out there and concepts for us to be learning um, and patterns really help us get in the habit of being able to see relationships form order, form rules, uh, to sort of make sense of all of that information. Uh, we can see patterns in art, music, nature, reading. Patterns are all around us, friends. I encourage you to be looking for patterns, especially since we've been talking about it so much this week. I guarantee if you go on a walk around your neighborhood or maybe you're out running errands with mom or dad, I bet you can find lots of patterns in the world around you. And then once you're starting to look for them, you can't stop seeing them. Um, I also have that they develop logic and our critical thinking skills. It helps us to think reasonably and to uh, really develop or um, builds on our problem solving skills, which as we know is a very important skill for us to be able to do in our daily lives and with all subject matter in school as well. And then lastly, it says prepare uh, kiddos to learn complex or more challenging number concepts and operations. Again, that's where this is our, um, you know, it helps to create a building block or our foundations in learning, which is our last one here, that we build upon and grow each year um, 
so that when we get to those really challenging math concepts as we get older, uh, we are familiar with being able to see these relationships, understand patterns, and sort of make sense of that information and really feel confident in our problem solving skills. So that's why we've been focusing on math all, um, or on patterns all this week. Um, now I'd like us to practice singing our song together. And again, we'll kind of relate it to our chart here for a refresher for all your brains um, to feel ready to learn. And then we're gonna do some practicing with uh, different pattern activities and extending the pattern once we figure out what that pattern rule is. All right, are you ready to sing along with me at home? I hope by now you're starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with our pattern song. And I know by the end of this week and next, you guys will be singing along so beautifully with me at home. Again, it's to the tune of the Ants Go Marching. Are you guys ready? A pattern, it goes on and on, hurrah, hurrah. A pattern, it goes on and on, hurrah, hurrah. A pattern, it goes on and on. It could be shapes or numbers too. When we solve the pattern rule, then we can extend. Bum, bum, bum. A pattern can be growing or repeating. A pattern can be growing or repeating. A pattern can be growing where you add on more and more each time. Or the pattern will repeat in all these ways. Bum, 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 bum. Yay, nice job. I can hear all my friends singing along with me at home. You are doing a fabulous job singing along and hopefully that is helping you to remember all about patterns um, and it will get stuck in your brain. So I know you won't ever forget all of this awesome stuff that we've been talking about this week. Okay, so we've sung our song here and it goes along with my chart over here. So we'll touch uh, base on some of that vocabulary that we've been talking about as well. So again, geometric means shapes. So we're specifically looking at shape patterns this week, and then we're going to build on that knowledge for next week, we'll focus on number patterns. Uh, the definition of a pattern is written underneath the, uh, the word patterns at the top right here. And it says it occurs when something is repeated and arranged following a rule. So again, that kind of touches on repeated. Uh, we know that a pattern, it goes on and on, hurrah, hurrah right? Our, um, as we repeat, it just keeps continuing on and on once we've figured out what that pattern rule is. And then the, um, the word arranged here as well. That is how we organize or set up our pattern to establish or create that pattern rule. And then once we've figured out what our pattern rule is, we can extend or continue on our pattern. And then we talked about a pattern can be growing or repeating. We've got growing patterns on the side right over here. And here's uh, two visual or picture examples for you guys to be um, help you in your minds think of growing patterns. But the word growing already kind of puts that in our brain that it's going to get bigger and add more on each time. So here you can see I've got a blue circle and then one gray triangle. A blue circle again, and then I have two gray triangles. A blue circle again three gray triangles, and what would come next? You got it, it would be another uh, blue circle and four gray triangles. Then we've got our orange circles down here. I've started with three orange circles, and then I add three to it, so I double it. So now I have six altogether. But I added three the first time, now I'm gonna add four to give me a total of 10. That's how many I've got right over here, and then, since I added three, then I added four. I know my pattern rule is telling me to add one more each time. So now I would add on five to give me a total of 15. Then I'm gonna pop over to the repeating side over here. Um, repeating patterns, they go on and on and they can repeat in so many countless different ways. We talked about um, being able to find different ma uh, materials around your house. If you just go for a walk, um, you can find rocks, feathers, sticks, acorns, flowers, all sorts of things that you were able to use to help create so many countless different types of patterns. And we practiced some of those together. And some of the ones that we focus specifically on are A, B patterns where it goes one, then the other. 
one than the other. So in this one here, it's an orange triangle, purple circle. Orange triangle, purple circle, and repeats on and on. Then we've got A, B, B, where you have the yellow star, then two blue hearts. Yellow star, two blue hearts, and it repeats on. And then we flip it where it's two A's, so A, A, B. So you've got two orange squares there, and then the pink cloud. Two orange squares, pink cloud, and it repeats on. Um, we also talked about how you are able to arrange your patterns in so many different ways. Um, and it could be just by shapes, colors, sizes, textures, however it is that you choose to create your pattern. So here they're all the same shape but different colors and they're A, A, B, B. So I've got two blue, two yellow, two blue, two yellow. And then I have A, B, C, where I've got a pink circle, purple triangle, green triangle. And it starts again, purple circle, uh, I'm sorry, pink circle, purple triangle, green triangle. And it continues on that way going A, B, C, A, B, C. And then again at the uh, bottom, we've got all that vocabulary, geometric patterns, shape patterns, or number patterns. We know they can be growing or repeating, um, increasing and decreasing. We'll talk more about next week with um, our number patterns. Extending the pattern on is just being able to continue to build on it, which is the activity that we are going to do here in just a momento. And then um, we know our pattern rule. That is when we figure out exactly how many it's either growing or what is the way it is repeating. And then once we know that pattern rule, then we are able to extend. And that um, pattern rule is how we are arranging or putting together that pattern. You guys are amazing. I hope some of this is starting to make sense to your brains and stick in your minds. Um, and hopefully then you guys will be able to help me um, continue our patterns on here. So I know we had mentioned that we are gonna start working on extending some patterns. So I have this sheet right here that um, as you can see here, it's called Extending Patterns Challenge. So I thought that we could look at each of these patterns and I've kind of already started to get my snap blocks together. So I'm ready to go and figure out what the pattern rule is for each of these three patterns. And then we're gonna extend it two times past what we already have. So this first one here, pattern one. I'll hold it nice and close so you guys can see. So how many blue um, cubes do we have at the bottom of each of these three stacks? Yep, you're right, two blue. Does it go up or down? as these stacks are moving on with the amount of blue, just the blue cubes. No, it doesn't, right? It's two blue each time. So that's the way I'm kind of starting to look at each of these patterns. I'm just focusing on pattern one right now. And I noticed right away that there are two different colors. So the first thing I noticed was my blue cubes, there are two each, and they do not increase or decrease each time. Now I'm going to focus my eyes onto the yellow cubes there. I can see on the first one, there are two yellow cubes. So I've already put together our snap cubes. So I've got the same thing. This matches up with our first one right here. Two blue, two yellow. Then the next one, I've got two blue, which we've already decided. Let's look at how many yellow cubes are there. One, two, three four yellow cubes. So I have that built right here. We've got two blue and four yellow. Now, if I had, so just looking at the yellow, because we see that the yellow changes each time, whereas the blue stays the same. If I had two yellow on here, and now I have four yellow, how many did it increase or get bigger when I went from this one here to this second stack? You are so smart, friends. You are absolutely right. It increased by two. Now let's look at the third one. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So first I had two, then I had four, then I had six. And I've got that one already built here for us as well. We've got the two blue and the six yellow. So now, again, look at our three stacks. I have the two blue stays the same, but my yellow went two, then four, then six. 
what is my pattern rule? I can tell my pattern is growing. It's getting bigger each time. Even if I haven't figured out the pattern rule, I can see that just by looking at my yellow stacks or my yellow cubes here. But if it was two, then four, then six, what is our pattern rule? You are so smart, friends. It's getting bigger by adding two on each time. So now I know my pattern rule is I'm going to add on two yellows each time. So first I have two yellows, then four, then six. How many yellows would I have in my next uh, pattern cubes? You are amazing, friends. If we went two, then four, then six, I would have eight yellow cubes. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Still with the blue staying the same. So here's my cubes. They're really increasing, aren't they? They're getting bigger, growing each time. So now I've got four and they went two, four, six, eight. How many yellow cubes would I have on this next one? You are so awesome, friends. Two, four, six, eight, ten. So my last little stack of cubes here, again, has the same two blue. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten yellow cubes. Our pattern rule was we added on two yellow cubes each time. So I was able to go from two yellow in our first stack here to four, to six, to eight, to 10, all the way up to 10. And the blues stayed the same each time. You are amazing, friends. Now let's look at pattern two, because they get a little bit trickier each time. So I'm gonna look at this first one. Again, my brain says, Okay, I see two colors. What are our two colors in pattern two here? Yep, orange and purple. So first I'm gonna look at the purple because it's right up here at the top. Does the purple change each time or does it stay the same? Yeah, it stays the same. There's just that one purple. So I know my purple will stay the same, the same way that my blues here stayed the same on the bottom. But is there a different number of orange cubes each time? There definitely is. And I've already got this one ready to go for us as well. So count with me, friends, how many on this one here orange cubes do we have? Yep, you got it. One, two, three, with one purple on the top. So that's what I've created right here. Three with one purple on top. Now let's look at the second one. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I went from three orange cubes and one purple to six orange cubes and one purple. How many did I add on if I went from three to six? Amazing, friends. Three to get to six. I added on three more. And my purple again stayed the same. Now let's look at the third stack here. Let's count our orange cubes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine orange cubes and my one purple stayed the same. So I went from three to six to nine with my one purple at the top there. So how many did it increase again? You got it, friends. We're adding on three each time to make this growing pattern. So we add three, then six, then nine. So our pattern rule is, you got it. We're gonna add on three each time. So if I had three, then six, then nine, how many orange cubes would I have next? So if I add three onto nine, I have a total of, you are so smart, friends. My little cube here at the top doesn't quite fit on, but that's okay. It goes to 12. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I have three, six, nine, 12. Now, if I want to extend on one more time, again, our pattern rule is we're adding three each time and our one purple stays the same at the top. So if I had 12 and then I want to add on three more, what is it friends? 12 plus three is nice job. 15. I really had to look and see if I had 15 orange cubes. Look how tall my stack is. All right, let's count them just to make sure because in math, we always double check our work just to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes. It's easy to make one simple mistake and then we get totally off on our pattern rule. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 each of my orange cubes with my one purple that stayed the same on the top. So we found out, friends, by looking at both of our colors, we saw that our purple stayed the same just the way our blue stayed the same in these uh, stacks in our first pattern here, and that our orange added on three each Time. So that was our pattern rule to add three each time so that our stacks look at how much they increased. We started with three, then six, then nine, then 12, then all the way up to 15. I love working with these snap cubes as well because they're really good to help us practice with our fine motor skills. Because having to really stack these all together and squish them together to make sure that we build such a long stack, I really had to use my fingers and make sure I was also counting one each time. All right, friends, you guys did such an amazing job on our extending patterns challenge. Our pattern three is a tricky one, and we're going to start that together uh, in our next lesson um, here in just a little bit. So I just wanted to thank you so much to all of my friends for all of your hard work. You guys are amazing, and I can't wait to do patterns again together tomorrow. Have a good day, friends. Bye. in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.